Hello family and friends. Welcome once again to another episode of Light of Knowledge International. I'm Amarjeet and I'm here with our very beautiful sister from California, Sacramento, and she is a sister Hansa. Welcome sister Hansa and thank you for joining us on Light of Knowledge. Uh, how many years have you been a Raj Yogini? Almost 44 years. 44 years. Wow. So we have a lot to catch up on with you. So Didi, I want to go back in time when you were, were a young girl. What was your life like and what was your state of mind like before you uh, came into Raj Yoga? Yeah, that's a really interesting story. Actually, this is what I always share with people that we each one born with wonderful stories. True. And slowly, slowly it unfolds. Mm. I feel that my spiritual awakening, realization and quest in my mind, in my heart, started maybe previous life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when I was very young, I was always mentioning to my parents that, you know, I have come from some ashram. Oh. And I want to go back there. Okay. You have brought me from some sacred place, okay. holy place, and please help me to return back that place. Hmm. And fortunately, I studied in the school that my principal was following Mahatma Gandhi's um, philosophy. And she accepted in her life, adopted actually, that she will live life of celibacy and she will do the social service to uplift the girls. Mm. And so we will have every day learning about the Gita. And we will recite the mantras and all this stuff. And my uh, father also was follower of Mahatma Gandhi. Mm -hmm. He is by profession an attorney. He's still 92 years old. And he said, we have to follow certain principles in the life. Mm -hmm. We don't go behind the material comforts. So these kind of things was helping me to nurture my inner consciousness. Yes, yes, uh, I totally agree with you because we all hear about that um, eternal and Amar Atma. Gee. So, and you know, sometimes we forget and we are yes. so lost in this body and in this lifetime yes, that right. we don't realize that we are coming from somewhere else. Yes. And we have to keep reminding ourselves that. I always suggest everyone that whatever kind of life you are living, you have to go within mm -hmm. and see your inner design. Mm. And that's why one of the things I like in Raj Yoga meditation, that you sit in solitude and you contemplate on yourself. Mm -hmm. See, one of the very beautiful things we learn here, learn to talk to yourself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Learn to appreciate yourself. Because each and every one is a unique creation of divine. Mm -hmm. of God mm -hmm. and I am also that you are that and all our friends and family watching now they all are there mm -hmm. so we request everyone find time in the morning afternoon evening minimum three times as you are feeding your body three times minimum breakfast lunch dinner try to connect that I am not only body but along with body the one who is working through body, beautiful yes. divine energy. It's different. So I am not Hansa. You are not Amarjit. We are Hansa and Amarjit in a temporary level. In this body. In this body, exactly. But we are eternally beautiful stars. And that's why you have applied the Tilak. That's true. And Did that's you? why in all the temples, even brothers also, they, they the get tilak. the uh, tilak mm. and that also is very beautiful sandalwood. To calm Mostly. and cool. Right. It's a calm, cool and, and beautiful golden color. And smells beautiful. It smells beautiful also, fragrant. fragrant. So it says that you are a golden soul. Ah. Filled with coolness. 
filled with calmness, filled with fragrance. So sometimes people say, you know, how to meditate or uh, maybe it is a long process. So we said, no, meditation is the most simple technique mm. to unfold, uncover your inner coolness, inner calmness. That is what you are. And that's why in the temple, they apply the tilak that women and men, brother and sister, they all receive it with so much sacred feelings. Because beyond the body, whether we are female or male, the soul or this um, energy point that we are inside is, is beyond gender. Exactly. If human beings learn this simple basic truth of the life, that I am beyond a the combination of body and soul. Mm -hmm. See, soul is like a driver and body is like a car. Mm -hmm. If dri driver is an expert driver, but if doesn't have a car, what can he do? True. And the car is there, Just expensive there. car, Mercedes car, BMW, but driver is not there. Can't so it's it. required combination. So if we come to understand that, then whatever happen in external life, we don't go into reactive mode. Mm -hmm. We don't get upset. We don't get angry. We don't get frustrated. We don't blame. We don't defame. If something outside is not in a proper way, the way I want, what I need to fix, what do I need to fix inside yes. myself? There is nothing happening outside that is not in my control. Mm. It's internal system. That is just reflection. Like when you stand near the mirror, what you see? Just reflection, mm. right? You are not that. You are not that. The same way outside whatever is happening is my inside reflection. Mm -hmm. So if I fix inside, outside will be fixed. Mm -hmm. So it helps us not to complain, not to get angry, not to get upset, not to be frustrated, not to be depressed. And also if, if we are just in this body temporarily, mm -hmm. then this is just a role play. Exactly. And we are playing different roles yes. and enjoy it. Exactly. <laughs> right. It is like Shakespeare said, yes. this world is drama stage. We yeah. all are actors. We all are actors. So what, act, what role you are playing is not important. How are you playing that important? Mm. You know, when I was young, around uh, 10, 11 years old, and in our school, there was a talent evening program. And one of the programs we were doing, one of the items, that journey of Gautam Buddha, mm. from Prince Siddharth to Gautam Buddha. Mm -hmm. And I was happened to be selected. It was a three minutes role I had, but as a Prince Siddharth. Okay. And so I had to sit with uh, king and queen as a prince Siddharth, mm -hmm. you know, like a young Siddharth. At that time in my young mind, I thought, you know, Gautam Buddha had a kingdom and all these things was available, comfort and luxury and palace and everything. But still he felt mm -hmm. so, there is something more than special mm -hmm. than any this material thing. Mm -hmm. And that's why he chose the path to go in meditation in search and touch to that truth, mm -hmm. that divine. Mm -hmm. So I said, we don't have kingdom. We don't have that luxury. We are lucky. We have a straightforward shortcut. So Gautam Buddha's story and your having been given that role in school was a part of enhancing your journey as well. Exactly. Okay. It right. was like you were given that role in a play and you decide you you went deep into it right. and felt, ah, oh, I gotta play this role in my real life as well. Exactly. Wow. And so I said that, you know, we don't have kingdom, nothing. So it's lucky mm -hmm. that we can just go directly. Gautam Buddha had to go through that big thing mm -hmm. to cross mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So I just thought, you know, I'm very lucky. You had all this background and this beautiful school and you were playing these roles. How did you come into the institute? What happened that I was looking for something. Mm -hmm. I also perhaps in subconscious mind didn't know exactly what I'm looking sure. for. But I knew I, I want, I something, want something different. So my one of the friend's sister 
came in contact with Brahma Kumaris. And so she said, you know, this is a very special place. Mm. So we both went there. And the moment I entered it, and I saw Shiva Baba and Brahma Baba's picture, and I said, this is my place. This is what I was looking for. And Immediately? Yeah, 30 seconds. Oh my, <laughs> with nobody even talking to you? Nothing. Mm. And then uh, some sisters were there wearing white dress and then Om Shanti and welcoming us. And uh, so I said, you know, what can I do so I can become like you? <laughs> okay. Because in my journey, like before I came in contact with Brahma Kumaris, you know, I was thinking, I was telling my parents, I wish we would be Jain, then I can become Sadhvi. I would Oh. Had a, or we would be Christian, then I could have chance to become nun. Oh. Because I want to become somebody like Mirabai or oh. a something who can be with God and do the God Seva. You were in love with God even before? Before that, right, exactly. And you yeah. knew it. Yes, you knew it. That right. I didn't want the normal married life and children. Yeah, nothing like that. I want that, to yeah. give up my life for God's service yes. and to be close to Him and search Him and seek Him and find Him. Wow. Yeah, it was it was very clear, clear to me yeah. because and you were already uh, eighteen by then, and you hadn't changed your opinion and your thoughts in uh, while you were growing up. So naturally, yeah. it was uh, it was destined. Mm. It was destined. It was recorded. It was just unfolding. Unfolding, right? So sisters were smiling because I was eighteen years old, and um, and you hadn't you, even heard a word, and you're like, I want to be like you. Exactly. They must have been so happy. <laughs> One hand they were happy, but another hand it was like. You have to prepare yourself, right? Huh. Because to dedicate your life, you have to be. Okay, they thought you are too. You are enthusiastic right now. Calm down. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> right, okay. exactly. So they and took you step by step. Step by step, right? So then they said, "Okay, you go through this seven days course." And I said, "You know, I want to do it in one day, seven <laughs> days." <you know? laughs> I can imagine so, your enthusiasm. Right, exactly. Because, because you, I felt I received something. Yeah. I want more. I want yeah. more. <laughs> Because what happens that this is like eye opening. Okay. Okay. This is like internally your soul was thirsty, mm -hmm. hungry, mm -hmm. and you got something. So you just want to drink it, eat it, and appreciate it. So was it difficult to leave the center to go home each day? <laughs> Fortunately, not. That's also, you can say, little paradox or whatever, because I was going home with new thoughts. Oh. New feelings, mm -hmm. and I will go home and share everything to my parents. Okay. You know, I'm going to this place, and they are teaching this about Gita, and they are teaching that you have to live your life free from vices, and uh, it is written in the Gita you should not have lust, anger, attachment, jealousy, all this stuff. So my parents were very happy that in a young age I'm learning so many good values, mm -hmm. and I'm getting connected to the. God's path. Actually, what I feel is every soul, every human being has, it has this. So what we are understanding that everyone has it, but because of the external voice and noise, mm -hmm. our soul is suppressed by it. Mm -hmm. So that's why if we sit in solitude, talk to ourselves, soul power, soul's energy will come up and that will make our life peaceful, calm, cool and joyful without external comforts. So thank you so much for this and we will surely continue with you. Om Shanti. Thank you, Didi. Om Shanti. I appreciate invitation. Thank you, everyone. And I'm sure you all uh, experienced uh, Sister Hansa's beautiful, calm and peaceful way of uh, sharing her experience and also giving us a lot of light of knowledge. So we will continue our journey with Sister Hansa in the next episode. Thank you so much. See you. Om Shanti. Bye.